Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going over an interesting article I saw on the New York Post and I have seen going around on Twitter as well, suggesting that ex-representative Matt Gates, who, if you are unfamiliar with him, was initially selected by Donald Trump to be his next attorney general and a few days ago announced that he was dropping out of the essentially the race to become attorney general after it was becoming very clear he would not have enough Republican support in the United States Senate to be officially voted on and nominated. Uh, he dropped that, didn't want to be a distraction for the Trump administration. A report has come out from Gates directly, actually, signaling that he could potentially be eyeing, or eyeing a run for Florida governor in 2026 to succeed Republican Ron DeSantis. So I'm going to break it all down. And this is how things unfolded. Matt Gates, the former rep from the state of Florida, suggested on Saturday that he might run for governor of Florida, the Sunshine State, after he withdrew his consideration as President-elect Trump's attorney general pick. The 42-year-old Republican posted a gif of the state flag of Florida waving on X, teasing that he is open to running. He was responding to ex-Florida House Rep Anthony Sabatini, who posted Gates will, quote, be the next governor of the state of Florida. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is term limited from seeking re-election. Gates announced Thursday he was no longer a candidate to run the Justice Department, causing some Republicans to question whether he'd attempt to reclaim the House seat he was re-elected to earlier this month or seek a different position, including potentially lobbying to take over from Marco Rubio in the Senate once Rubio resigns to become Trump's Secretary of State. I did a video on this actually on who will replace Marco Rubio just a few days ago. I'll link that at the end of this video. You should definitely check that out as well. Gates has resigned from the lame duck 118th Congress immediately after Trump announced his choice of lawmaker as AG November 13th, but he left the door open to taking his seat in the 119th Congress, which convenes January 3rd. If Gates decides he wants to return to the House, he will have to contend with an ex a ethics probe into allegations of sexual misconduct and illicit drug use. Gates has denied all wrongdoing. So this is a very, very fascinating situation. And one where, before I get into it, I'm going to show you the post of what it was on X as well. This was from, of course, Anthony Sabatini. He tweeted, Matt Gates will be the next governor of the state of Florida. Gates, his official account, posted a gif of the waving state Florida flag. This is a very fascinating situation, and if you look at the 2026 Florida gubernatorial election Wikipedia page now, Matt Gates is officially listed as someone who has publicly expressed interest in the race. This is a fascinating situation, and one that is certainly going to cause a lot of controversy, I would say, potentially among Republicans in Florida. Because it has been made no secret that Matt Gates is a strong ally of President-elect Donald J. Trump. Absolutely no qualms about that one bit. And it was even expected a few years ago that Matt Gates may potentially draw, or leave the House to run for governor in 2026. Ultimately, Gates did run for re-election in 2024, so maybe it looked like that, maybe putting that uh, kind of to the side for a second. But Gates running for governor in 2026 of Florida seemed to just make a lot of sense for a while now. And as the article mentioned, there have been a bunch of allegations made against Matt Gates that I'm personally not getting into on this video. I don't want to get into what the specifics are because I'm not totally well versed on all the allegations and such. So I'm not addressing them in this video. I'm sure there are a bunch of great videos on YouTube of people discussing them. Uh, if you do want to check those out, I'm sure there are, but I'll not be discussing them in this video. But in terms of a Republican primary in Florida, it's going to be an open race because Republican Governor Ron DeSantis is term limited per Florida state law and is not allowed to seek a consecutive third term in office. And a person to be governor, according to Article 5, Section 5B of the Florida Constitution, states the person to serve as governor must be at least 30 years old, be a permanent resident of Florida for at least seven years, and not have served as governor for six years or more of the two prior terms. So obviously DeSantis it fits that last requirement of serving two terms as governor. As for Matt Gates himself, this is a very fascinating situation because the Florida's governor's race is looking like to be a very contested governor's race, unless someone like President Trump were to come out early and endorse Gates for governor. If he were not able, or if President Trump did not do that, it's looking like to be a wide open governor's race. Where names like Matt Gates and Representative Byron Donalds have long been talked about as two popular names to run for this governor's seat. There are also pretty high profile names as well, like Francis Suarez, the mayor of Miami, who also ran for president in 2024 briefly, 
he would also generate some name and buzz. Jeanette Nunez is the lieutenant governor of Florida under Ron DeSantis. Now she could be seen as sort of the next up to continue Ron DeSantis' governorship of Florida. So she could be a very popular name as well. Ashley Moody is the current attorney general of Florida. She's been getting a lot of statewide name buzz and recognition in the state as well. So she could be a potential contender. And Ron DeSantis' wife, the first lady of Florida, uh, Casey DeSantis, could also be a potential candidate for this race. So there are a lot of strong Republicans in Florida likely eyeing the 2026 governor's race. And obviously, this is also contingent on what happens with the Senate race with who fills Marco Rubio's seat as well. Hypothetically, if someone like Byron Donald were tapped or decided to run for the Senate seat in 2026, that would be a primary challenger that is out of their way for Matt Gates. But it's a very interesting situation because Matt Gates, for better or worse, appears to be very, very polarizing in Republican circles. More so, I think people who are very loyal to President Trump are going to be the people who more like Matt Gates strongly, and people who are perhaps not as loyal to President Trump are going to be the Republicans who really don't like him. And we saw this a little bit with the reports that some senators who were going to vote against Matt Gates if he did go to a vote in the Senate. Your Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, John Curtis, Mitch McConnell. These four people are more of the establishment wing of the Republican Party. They're not of the MAGA wing. And it's very interesting to watch here because Florida, under Governor Ron DeSantis, has become much more of a Republican state. Of course, looking at the 2024 election, Donald Trump won the state of Florida by about 13 percentage points. 13 percent. If you look back at the governor's race in 2022, Ron DeSantis won this race by 19.4 percent. So it's looking like Florida is going to elect a Republican governor in 2026, barring a massive surprise. And I just want to get ahead of this now. I could absolutely see the argument being made, especially in the Democratic side, if Matt Gates is the Republican nominee for governor, the ethics probe will likely come up again, and the Democrats will make the case that Matt Gates will be the 2026 version of Mark Robinson, the Republican who ran for governor in this most recent election in 2024. And of course, Josh Stein, the Democrat, defeated Mark Robinson 54.9 to 40.1 after Mark Robinson's scandal came out. And while I understand where this is coming from, I don't think this is exactly a similar situation in that, for one, North Carolina actually has a history of electing a lot of Democratic governors, a lot more than Florida does. So I don't think that's 100% a accurate comparison. I also, I don't think, surprisingly, this may sound crazy, especially if like 10 to 12 years ago, Florida is now actually a much more Republican state than North Carolina is, especially the presidential level. We saw this in 2024. Florida voted for Donald Trump by 13 points. North Carolina voted for Donald Trump by three. So it's a much more Republican state, especially if Donald Trump throws his support behind Matt Gates in the primary. I think enough Republican voters would agree with the president and vote for Matt Gates if that's who he supports in Florida, regardless of if any accusations come out against Gates. So this is just a very fascinating news that is going to be something to watch develop as time goes on. Of course, the 2026 Florida governor election is not till a little under two years away. So there's plenty of time uh, for things like this to develop. Around this time, there's always rumors of people running for office and stuff. And a lot of times, especially in 2022, a lot of times, a lot of candidates did not actually end up running. So we're going to have to wait and see if this develops. But I think a lot of opponents of Matt Gates may be very quick to write him off especially given the situation in the last few weeks. But Matt Gates has closely aligned himself with President Trump. He's going to be, President Trump is very popular in the state of Florida. And if President Trump throws his support behind Matt Gates and early on, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I think would start out as the front runner in the state of Florida to be the next governor of the state, which may drive some not so friendly Matt Gates Republicans and Democrats crazy. But I think a lot of Republicans and Democrats have to take this serious that if Matt Gaetz does want to run for governor, there's a better than 50% chance that I think he could win the primary and win the state general election. And respectfully, yes, we saw some polls showing the Senate race between Rick Scott and the Democrat Debbie McCarcel Powell could be close. But when you look at what the results ended up being, Scott also won this race by 13 points. So at this point, Florida is less so of a toss-up state and more of a likely to safe Republican state, arguably even a safe Republican state now. 
So I think if Matt Gates does run for governor, I would say right now he's the favorite to win the primary and would be the favorite to win the general election as well, which is why I find this news so fascinating is because for a while now, when I think of who could be the next governor of Florida, the top two people that come to mind for me are Matt Gates and Byron Donalds. And I think the only scenario where Matt Gates really has a legitimate shot of losing the primary is if Byron Donalds runs, because he's been talked about being the governor of Florida by several political pundits for the last few years now. That would be a very contested primary. If Donalds, for instance, runs for the Senate race that Marco Rubio currently represents, then it would be Matt Gates potentially going up, maybe Ashley Moody or Jeanette Nunez. That is a much more manageable field for him, especially if he has the backing of President Trump. So I just found this very fascinating and something I'm definitely going to keep an eye on going forward as something that could potentially spell some interesting news for future elections. That'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a like, click subscribe, share with your friends and family, and hope to see you in a future video. That will do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like. And if you really liked it, please remember to click the subscribe button and make sure you turn post notifications on so you always get notified when I post a new video. That way you never miss one. Also, please remember to share this video with your friends and family if you really, really, really like the video. And remember to stay tuned because I'll be posting at least one video every single day leading up until election day. So I'd really appreciate it if you keep coming back and watching those videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.